In 1994, 21-year-old Louis Balancio was murdered by a man associated with the notorious Tanglewood Boys, a farm team for the Lucchese crime family. But why was Balancio, the son of a politician, killed? Let's check it out. In February 1994, the body of Louis Balancio was found outside the Strike Zone sports bar in Yonkers. He had been stabbed 13 times. As one newspaper reported, the son of a Yonkers politician was stabbed to death during a scuffle outside a city bar yesterday morning, four days after his 21st birthday, Yonkers police said. The extent of Louis Balancio's injuries were detailed in one report. It stated, Louis Balancio died of multiple stab wounds and incised wounds of the chest, back and upper extremities, heart, lung and kidney. Investigators were able to determine that a fight had broken out between two gangs at the sports bar. However, Louis Balancio was not affiliated with any criminal gangs, leading to confusion as to why he was brutally stabbed to death. The investigation was hampered by a wall of silence from witnesses. It was reported. Amazingly, investigators say there were 30 witnesses to the crime. None has come forward. Another paper stated, Police have yet to charge anyone in his slaying, working against an apparent code of silence bred by fear of retaliation or worse, by complicity to protect the killers. We are begging the youth in the community who love Louis to disclose information to the police, his father Jeff said last week. If they have any kind of loyalty, bravery or interest in community, they need to come forward. I don't want another family to go through what we're going through, said Louis's cousin Sarah Balancio. The people in the bar saw exactly what happened, but they will not come forward. Why isn't anyone coming forward for him? Eventually, the authorities were able to determine that the fight outside the sports bar was between an Albanian gang, a group of Irish guys, as well as members of the Tanglewood Boys. The Tanglewood Boys were a gang made up of sons and relatives of made men in the New York Cosa Nostra families and were affiliated with the Lucchese crime family. A break in the case came when an FBI agent who was conducting surveillance of Lucchese mobster Anthony Blue Eyes Santarelli spotted the made man suspiciously disposing of two bags in separate dumpsters in the Bronx. One newspaper reported... The agent went to the dumpster. He was expecting to find gambling receipts, nothing more. Instead, he found clothes, bloody clothes. One sweater, one pair of sweatpants, a jacket. They were covered with fresh blood. The agent looked closer and saw that the labels had been ripped out. Analysis of the blood on the clothes matched that of the slain Louis Balancio. Lucchese mobster Anthony Santarelli was the father of Alfred Freddy Boy Santarelli, who was a member of the Tanglewood Boys. The investigation into Balancio's death uncovered that another of the Tanglewood Boys, Anthony De Simone, had stabbed Louis Balancio to death and then sought the assistance of Freddy Boy Santarelli and his father Anthony Santarelli in disposing of his blood-covered clothes. Anthony De Simone is the son of longtime Lucchese family mobster Salvatore Salibo Di Simone and the younger Di Simone quickly took off on the run and wasn't seen again for over five years. Over the course of the investigation into Balancio's murder, over 20 people were arrested, but Anthony Di Simone remained at large. In 1996, Tanglewood Boys gang member Darren Mazzarella was charged by the authorities of being involved in Louis Balancio's murder. Darren Mazzarella was also facing charges for his role in a 1992 murder, as well as racketeering, and he decided to become a cooperating witness. It was Mazzarella who would provide a detailed account of what transpired on the night of Louis Balancio's murder. He would tell journalist Mike McCallery the following, I was in the place a couple of hours before the fight broke out, Darren said. Louis Balancio is already in the bar with another guy who I know socially, but I never did business with. At the time, Balancio's friends are trying to get in. There was an Albanian crew trying to get in. But they had a fight outside the place too. And De Simone don't want to let them in. 
the Irish guys and the Albanian guys start to fight outside at the top of the steps. There is a rumble. I got out. We are 100% on the Irish guy's side. De Simone came out to help me and them. I'm going to fight this Albanian kid near the underpass, but he says he knows my brother. I run back past the bar, see Balancio bleeding on the ground. He's going to die. We get in Anthony De Simone's car. We were ready to pull out of the parking lot and Anthony pulled out a pistol to shoot people running. The kid was in a rage, I guess you could say. On the way to my house, we throw the knife out the window. Anthony's driving. He has blood on his clothes and his hands. I take him into the house and bandage his hands in my bathroom. He says, I killed an Albanian kid. I say, that kid you killed? I don't think he was an Albanian. I think it's a friend of one of the younger guys. He was thinking it was an Albanian he grabbed because he never saw Balancio before. He just stabbed him up. I call the bar from my house and speak to one of the owners. He says, tell Anthony to get out of here. That kid's dead. My roommate Freddy boy walks in. We're going to help each other any way we can. They put all the bloody clothes in the bags. Freddy boy leaves with the clothes and he leaves with Anthony's gun. He also leaves with the money we had in the house. In case the cops get a warrant and find it. About $100,000. Freddy leaves with the garbage bags. This part is amazing, Darren Mazzarella told me. Freddy is a street guy and he has to give the bloody clothes to his father. The father has to be the dumbest fucking wise guy of all time. He has two fireplaces in his house and he drops them off in the Bronx and he doesn't see the only other white guy in that neighborhood sitting in the parking lot in an FBI car. I'm working with morons here. Anyway, we took Anthony to my friend Vinny Russo's house who later gets arrested with his father and Junior Gotti. We waited until D. Simone's father, Sally Bo, decided what to do. Sally Bo, a Lucchese capo, sent another person who is also a made guy to get Anthony. The last I seen of Anthony D. Simone, he was wearing my Raiders jacket. He says, see you in about 10 years guys. Anthony D. Simone ain't ever been seen again. And then in November 1999, after nearly six years on the run, Anthony D. Simone turns himself in to the police. As one newspaper reported, Anthony D. Simone, 32, who had eluded investigators since 1994, walked alone into a Yonkers police station Tuesday and surrendered in the killing of Louis Balancio. He is not admitting guilt. As Balancio's parents watched, he pleaded innocent in Westchester County Court to two counts of second degree murder and two counts of tampering with evidence. In October 2000, Anthony De Simone was convicted of the Louis Balancio killing. Lucchese mobster Anthony Blue Eyes Santarelli and his son Alfred Freddy Boy Santarelli also received convictions for their part in disposing of evidence. One newspaper wrote, With dozens of people watching, reputed mobster Anthony De Simone brazenly stabbed a Yonkers College student to death in 1994, then worked feverishly to avoid prison ever since. De Simone, with help from other Lucchese crime family hoodlums, silenced witnesses, tampered with evidence and even hid clothes stained with the victim's blood. But it wasn't enough. De Simone, 33, was convicted this week of killing 21-year-old Louis Balancio outside the now defunct Strike Zone bar in Yonkers. Two men who helped De Simone ditch the bloody clothes, Anthony Blue Eyes Santarelli, 54, and his son Alfred Freddy Boy Santarelli, also have been convicted. Another paper reported, The jury of 10 women and two men found Anthony De Simone, 34, guilty of second-degree murder and tampering with physical evidence after nearly two days of deliberations. Anthony De Simone received a sentence of 25 years to life for the Louis Balancio killing. Amazingly, a few years later, De Simone's conviction was overturned after a judge ruled that De Simone had been improperly charged and tried. CBS News reported, It's a strange technical loophole. The same jury that convicted De Simone of murder with depraved indifference also acquitted him of second-degree murder. The High Court ruled that depraved indifference is inappropriate, which throws out the conviction, but leaves the acquittal on the higher charge. Prosecutors had nowhere to go but to lower the bar. And De Simone took that deal, 
agreeing he stabbed Louis Balancio 13 times and accepting time already served as his punishment. Anthony de Simone took a plea deal of three and a half to ten and a half years in prison on the new reduced charge of reckless manslaughter. This change in charge infuriated Louis Balancio's family. His mother stated, He took out his kidney, his lung, severed his spine, got him in the buttock, in the neck. How do you do that to someone up close? How do you take a knife and put it into someone? He didn't even know Louis. I mean, this is a sociopath, Dorothy Balancio said. Due to time already served, Anthony De Simone was released on parole in December 2010. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.